Hey guys, Grumpy here with another episode of By the Rules. So in this episode, we're going to cover uh, accepting a commission, uh, story points, skill points, and then growing an early fleet, uh, as well as go over a little bit of fleet composition and then a little bit of um, ship design. So hope you guys enjoy. All right, so heading back over to Nergala, we are going to go ahead and talk to the station commander and we will commission with the hegemony. This is going to get us 25,000 credits a month, which is okay. Um, but more importantly, we're going to start gaining reputation with the hedge um, as we fight their enemies. So right now, their enemies with the pirates, Tritachion, Persian Leagues, and the Pathers. The pirates and the Pathers are permanent. Uh, Tritachion and Persian are just temporary. Um, as their hostilities resolve, then they'll go ahead and fall off. So let's go ahead and accept that commission. We'll lose reputation, but once they um, are no longer hostile to the hegemony faction, then the relations will actually default back down to zero. So, let's go ahead and cut the link. Thank you. Alright, now that we uh, are getting a commission, we're going to go ahead and check out what is on offer in the military tab. So, a couple of goodies in here. Um, some nice class weapons, uh, especially these heavy maulers and these high velocity drivers. Unfortunately, we have to be cooperative with them. Um, so we need to go earn some trust with the hedge. And then same thing with the fleets. Um, all of these are pretty much tucked away. Uh, we're not going to be able to get to them for a while, especially these larger ships. So in order to start gaining trust, we're going to go ahead and look or um, any missions that we can do, any pirates that we can fight, um, anything that's going to get us that nice reputation bonus. All right, so let's talk about skill points and story points. Skill points you gain every four bars, um, so that levels your character. Story points you gain every fourth of a level, um, so you gain four per level. Uh, skill points are what you spend to develop your skills. So we started the game off with Wolfpack Tactics. That was our first one. Now with our next skill point, I'm gonna go ahead and spend it on crew training. And basically the skills that I like to gather first are usually leadership um, because leadership buffs your entire fleet. Uh, and then sometimes I like to go for technology. And then very lastly, it's a split between industry and combat. Um, industry is good if you're suffering with your economy Typically, though, um, I don't usually have economic issues, so uh, it'll usually be combat. In combat, you want to take last because it only typically they only affect your ship. Um, you're not going to get any global bonus for taking combat skills. So we're going to level leadership up first because we want to move through the ranks, then technology, and then finally uh, combat or industry, depending. Now, story points. Um, in this Let's Play, it's going to be much smaller in scope, so we're not going to get to the colonization stage. Uh, if you watch Long Haul, you know I like to spend my story points uh, long term on my colonies. But for this, instead, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to spend story points on our officers. And I already did it here. Uh, you can see this green bar. Uh, this green bar is bonus experience. So when you go to mentor your officers, there'll be an option here for mentor. Um, it's going to do a couple of things to them. It's going to give them the bonus experience like I just mentioned. Uh, it'll give you a larger selection of skills when they level up. And then it'll also allow you to tailor their aggressiveness, uh, whether it be stepping it up or down one step. Um, officers range anywhere from timid, which means they will uh, stay well without an uh, enemy's weapon range, typically to the point where they stay out of missile range as well, which is really annoying. Uh, and then all the way up to reckless, where Oftentimes they will not necessarily disregard your orders, but will follow them to the point that they get their ship destroyed. So you want to be careful uh, either way. The steps that I like to use typically are steady, aggressive, and then reckless on very specific ships. But usually steady and aggressive is where you want to remain. So as a reward for our commission, um, we're starting to gain reputation. So we get access to the military tab. The military tab is very important. Um, it provides us the weapons that we otherwise wouldn't have access to and the ships that we wouldn't have access to on the typical open market. 
So we're going to go ahead and purchase an Enforcer. Um, this is a bit expensive. It's about half of our credits, but I think it's well worth it. And now let's go over um, ship design. So um, going over the benefits of the Enforcer, it's a very tanky ship. has a lot of armor built into it. Uh, it's a very heavy ship. Kind of slow, but uh, it has a very, very robust platform. Very flexible ship. You can build it in a myriad of different ways. The way that we're going to design this is going to be safety overrides because we are still in that small early fleet status and safety overrides is a major, uh, major boost in damage. So first off, we're going to start with the missiles. We want to spread harpoons in all of our small missile slots. Um, so now, just like the uh, drover here, we have additional missiles. Um, then next up, we're going to go ahead and make sure we're purchasing only legal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and purchase some heavy mortars for our mediums. And then for our... Uh, or, sorry, we're going to purchase some high explosive damage. So it's going to come from our heavy mortars. And then we want... Uh, ideally, we want a medium kinetic. However, uh, as you can see, our choices are very limited here. So instead, what we're going to do is just use a um, auto cannon. We're going to want a dual auto cannon, so we're going to actually steal one from the uh, lasher there and we'll replace that with something else. So let's go ahead and install what we have. Oh, actually, we didn't need to. Cool. Because we have one already. All right, so this is going to be the setup. Um, it's not ideal, but we're just working with what we have. And then to round out the ship, uh, we're going to go ahead and install some Vulcan cannons for point defense. So uh, now that this is designed, we have to balance it. So we need to look at our flux dissipation. We want to make sure that our flux dissipation is above our weapon flux. And the way we're going to solve that, of course, like I mentioned before, is with safety overrides. So safety overrides is going to do a couple things for our ship. Um, unfortunately, it's a drawback is that it's going to lower our weapon ranges, but that's okay because we want the Enforcer to be an aggressive ship anyway. Now let's go ahead and install our, install our officer there. Um, but it's also going to double the effectiveness of our vents. And because this officer has ordnance expertise, it's actually going to help us eva out even further because ordnance expertise gives us additional flux dissipation per point that we spend on our weapons. So we don't even need to install vents. Uh, we're already covered there. So now that our weapon flu our flux dissipation is above our weapon flux, we also want to check to see if it's above our shield flux. And yeah, it happens to be the case that uh, these combined is 565, which is still covered by our flux dissipation. So this is fantastic. Uh, what we're going to want to do is install some capacitors. And then we want to see what hull mods are available uh, to us. Now, you want to install heavy armor. We haven't learned heavy armor yet. So instead, we're going to go with armor weapon mounts. Um, this is going to give us a small bit of armor. And then we want something like hardened subsystems so that the combat readiness of our ship lasts a little bit longer. And then finally, we're going to uh, install just one vent because that's all we have available to us. And this is the ship. And now that we completed the system bounties in Corvus and Galatia, we're going to go ahead and turn to Esconia. Um, we don't necessarily, necessarily have an alliance with Esconia or with Sindria. But we also aren't uh, hostile to them so we'll go ahead and jump in there and then we'll fight their pirates on their behalf uh, we will still gain reputation with the hedge because of that commission and we'll get paid out the 1800 per frigate which is a very uh, large amount so let's set sail and uh carry on So here we are at Esconia. Uh, it's a pretty well guarded system. Uh, you have the Lion's Guard that does their regular patrols. Um, we're pretty safe here as long as we stay near one of those patrols. Um, typically the pirates are going to form around Umbra and kind of hang out there and then they'll fly off eventually. What we want to do is kind of stay near a Lion's Guard patrol and also near Umbra and see if we can uh, pick off some of those smaller pirate fleets. So let's go ahead and jump in. 
Um, Umbra is 1,000, 10,000 units away, so it's over here. So uh, we don't want to jump in directly on top of Umbra. We want to find safety over here and then fly uh, towards it. And actually, it looks like there's a pirate directly beneath us. So let's use a different jump point. Yes. And then let's fly uh, over towards Umbra. Us. Nope. Yeah, it looks like we get caught up in the middle of it anyway. All right, so for something like this, an engagement like this, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are near the um, largest fleet or largest ships in the fleet. So that's going to be the Eagle as well as the Falcon. Yes. And we want to make sure that we're going after the soft targets of the enemies. So our job is going to be um, keeping control of these frigates, as well as when we get the opportunity to sneak off and destroy these Colossus, we will. Uh, hopefully, these Eagles and Falcons can prove their worth. Uh, and then uh, it looks like they also have a few brawlers on their side. So let's go ahead and move into engage. And engage. So the Lion's Guard deploys behind us. So let's go ahead and grab our ships and just start assigning them uh, escort orders. So we're going to have our Lasher escort the Falcon. We're going to have our Centurion escort the Eagle. We're going to have our Drover. Um, we're just going to have our Drover follow the Eagle as well. And then our Enforcer can follow the Falcon. We're going to stay up front just to make sure that our drover has enough time to get back because it does not have safety overrides. And then uh, just fend off whatever gets close. We really want to uh, rely on our ally ships for this engagement. Nice. Looks like we got an early uh, kill on one of the hounds, which is fantastic. Alright, cool. Alright. So it looks like this strike is pressuring, so we're going to go ahead and engage on that. Getting very close, which is fantastic for us. Okay, uh, we don't want to get caught up so much necessarily fighting off these frigates, so we're actually going to head back over here and uh, watch out just to make sure that this eagle isn't taking too much damage. Um, and actually, we're going to go ahead and cut the enemy fleet off. We're going to give our enforcer the eliminate command. Uh, we'll get rid of this mule while we're down here, and then um, we'll go ahead and jump on that. Yeah, it looks like we can take care of this uh, real quick. And then we do so. And now we're going to go ahead and tell our enforcer to deal with the mule. Because I know it can solo that ship. And it looks like we're in the clear. Um, yeah, it looks like we should be just fine. Go ahead and destroy this Colossus when we get a chance. As soon as our engines come back online. Alright. We want to go ahead and back off. 
give ourselves an opportunity to dump our flux. Figure out where our enforcer is going. Now we wanted to engage the mule, so the mule has to give it its attention. And while the mule is engaging the enforcer, we don't necessarily care um, about this engagement. We want to take this opportunity to go ahead and destroy um, these ships. We can't really engage the Colossus while the mule is firing at us because the mule has that annoying heavy auto cannon, which is going to build our flux up. All right, looks like we got a chance here. Go ahead and tear down the Colossus. Oh, and we overload here, which is okay. Uh, we just want to back off. Just want to back off for a second. And uh, just be a little cognizant of how much high explosive damage is near us. And now we're good to go. Alright, cool. We need to go ahead and eliminate that kite. Now, there's a couple of stragglers. Um, I believe. We're safe now to go ahead and full assault. And what this is going to do is it's going to end the escort orders that we have going currently. It's a little spooky. You never really want, uh, never really want a uh, phase ship behind your carrier. But uh, this is going to end the escort orders and just kind of open my ships up to decide what's best for them and where they should engage. All right, let's go ahead and help our enforcer out because it is getting its flux worked up. It's not the end of the world though. Um, because it has safety overrides, it can always easily convert. I'll get one engine roll out. It can always easily back up and then um, dump its flux and then re-engage. Uh, it doesn't have to commit itself necessarily to the fight. So we're going to order ourselves to go ahead and attack the mule. We're going to transfer command over to the enforcer because the enforcer has burn drive and uh, otherwise it's not really going to be able to effectively engage this ship. So basically what we want to do is we want to force, we want to force the mule to keep its shields up. Uh, so that way it slows down, it loses its zero flux boost and that's going to um, allow the rest of our ship to, um, to catch up. And as an added bonus, we want to go make sure we split the mule. So what that means is uh, we're on one side of the mule and then whatever support ship is on the other side. Uh, the mule has an Omni Shield, so it can choose where it deploys it, but it doesn't have 360 degree coverage. So if you're attacking it from both sides, uh, it can't really defend using its shield. Uh, our flux is pretty high, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to lower our shield here. And then right before this ship blows up, um, we probably could tank it. But right before the shield blows up, the ship blows up, we're going to raise our shield again. Alright, let's back off. Let's raise our shield. We are good to go. And I believe that is everyone. So, uh, a little bit dangerous there, but we executed the plan. Um, we stayed near our allies, we supported them, and just did a little crowd control. Uh, picked off those ships wherever we could. And uh, we were victorious. So we will pursue them. We'll order our second in command to handle it. We'll just deploy a handful of ships. And we get a couple of drams. The reason we're doing that is because you get paid out for each uh, frigate you destroy. And freighters still count uh, towards that. So is there anything that we would particularly like? Let's see. No, none of these ships are interesting. Um... We'll go ahead and pass on all of those, and none of these are worth a story point. So we get 2,000 credits from the battle directly. Uh, we get a handful of rewards. I really like seeing that heavy machine gun, so that's going to go smack dab on our enforcer. Because I believe we are going to supplement our kinetic damage. It, it was an issue. Um, we're going to supplement our kinetic damage with these uh, light machine guns. But this is definitely going to go on the Enforcer and replace that. 
So the final thing we're going to do in this episode is allocate another skill point. I decided to put it in tactical drills, which is going to unlock the next tier of um, leadership of the two between officer training and then officer management. I typically prefer officer management. Um, this is going to give you two officers versus the officer training, which is going to give you another lead skill. Um, for a number of reasons, you really want as many officers as you can. Um, that way uh, you get like ECM rating, you get a large deployment pool, um, you can fine tune your ships. There's a number of reasons why you want more officers. Uh, making your officers better is also good, but uh, just having more officers is going to be better in my opinion. So that concludes this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We went over commission, we went over ship design, revisiting ship design, uh, testing in the field, and then we did a large scale battle. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, other than that, grumpy out.